नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री निशिंग हरे भगवान की जय सो टुडे इज मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस डे बीइंग द अपीयरेंस डे एनिवर्सरी ऑफ लॉर्ड निशिंग हरे द हाफ मैन हाफ लायन इंकरनेशन ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ही इज द लॉर्ड ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन It is says that there is no difference in terms of power between Lord Krishna, Lord Ramachandra, and Lord Nishinghadev. Lord Nishinghadev is an incarnation of chakra. The same chakra that's been described in the past times of Ambarish Maharaj, when he's been followed, this uh, chakra following Durbasa Muni up to the Vaikuntha planets, and Lord Narayan told Durbasa to please. You must ask for forgiveness from Ambaris Maharaj, the one whom you offended. It's the same chakra that sliced the head of Shishupal hmm? in that occasion where the. Rajasuya sacrifice has been performed by Yudhisthira Maharaj after the battle of Kurukshetra. In order to be forgiven, because so many soldiers, so many kings were killed. So Yudhisthira Maharaj, he concluded that to appease their family members and to the departed souls, he performed this Rajasuya sacrifice. But before that, he asked Bhima or Bhishma, yeah, Bhima, sorry, Bhima and Arjuna to go all over the world to collect taxes from the kings and yes white horses also were dispatched so that all the kings will give their share of tax and anyone who will oppose is considered that they will be uh, challenging king Yudhisthira who was enthroned as the next emperor of the world and so at that time when Sahadev because the, the first person that needs to be worshipped has to be the most senior the most prominent and Sahadev he suggested that Krishna should be the first person to be worshipped and immediately Shishupal he negate that 
suggestion saying that we don't know who is this person he has two fathers we don't know what is his caste whether he's a satriya or a vaisha mm, he's so lusty whenever he sees a beautiful woman he will soon try to conquer her attract her he has 16,108 wives no, how can you choose this person to be the first person to be worshipped? And this is Shupal actually is none other than Jai. Shishupal and Dantabakra, Jai and Vijay. They were given these three lives. Or they chose to have three lives as demons. They ask Lord Narayan to become demons so that they can come back immediately to their service as chokidars or guardians. So Shishupal, when he took birth, he had four arms. Hmm? But there was a sky, in the sky there was a voice, celestial voice, saying that the first person whom your child will have darshan that will make his two arms disappear will be the cause of his death. So everyone was having darshan of this little baby and then when it comes to when Lord Krishna came his two arms disappeared hmm. it's gone and the mother of Shishupal understood that it is Lord Krishna who is going to be the cause of his child's birth so immediately he, she begged, she begged, Krishna, please. There was this celestial boy saying that whoever whom my son will have darshan and the two arms will disappear will be the cause of his death. Please give me this benediction. So Lord Krishna says, yes. I will give you this benediction. However, only up to if he goes over a hundred insults, then he's going to die. So the mother was so happy because, yes, yes, I will teach my child to grow up as a very uh, exemplary person with good behavior good character that he will not he will not do this to you but then Shishupal became the leader of Duryodhan and his um, associates and he was always insulting, insulting, keep on insulting. So that's why it came to this point that he went beyond a hundred insults. That the chakra was cast by Lord Krishna at the time of the Rajasuya sacrifice. This same chakra that we've seen in the temples, like if they have, like we have chakra here also, symbol of chakra. So when we offer prayers to the chakra, it is offering prayers to Lord Nishing Hadeb. Mm. Lord Nishing Hadeb is the 
Lord of Protection that if we have any obstacles in our path of devotional service in executing devotional service uh, we should pray also to Lord Nishing Hale hmm? in the Nectar of Devotion there was a statement as well where Lord Ganesh uh, he may be worshipped to eliminate the obstacles and the path of bhakti so that by the mercy of Ganesh Ji will be also be able to have a smooth journey and our way back home back to Godhead but that benediction from Ganesh Ji is from Lord Nisinghadev as well because no demigods have their own power all the powers of the demigods coming from the Supreme Lord as well uh, it is not that they are the source of the benediction that they give to the followers also coming from the Supreme Lord so yes Ganesh Ji when he gave this benediction is coming from Lord Nishinghadev as well so in the beginning of the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam this question by Yudhisthir Maharaj was asked to Narad Muni that how come Shishupal when he was killed by Lord Krishna from the chakra how is it that the soul there was a light came out from the body of Shishupal and it entered into the body of Lord Krishna yogis, rishis, great great personalities they perform thousands of years of tapasya to attain Lord Krishna and how is it that this personality who was very inimical a demon so easily attained Lord Krishna enter into his body so Narad Muni says that Lord Krishna is impartial he is equal to everyone Samoham Sarbabhutesu Namid Vishyostya Priya He does not have an enemy and he does not have any friend. He is equal to everyone. Prabhupada gave an example just like a teacher. He will teach all the students in the classroom. But some of them, they don't want to do their homework. And some of them they will really study a lot study so hard and so the teacher will give more attention to the ones who are doing their homework but he will still teach the others who are not so well in their homework so it may look like Sisupal attained Sayuja, Sayuja Mukti, or Salokya externally. But internally, actually, he became, uh, he was reinstated into his service as a guard in the spiritual world. So, yes, the story went back far when the four Kumaras they were visiting the Vaikuntha planets and they passed through the seven gates and on the seventh gate Jai and Vijay the, do, the two gatekeepers they were amazed who are these boys they're not supposed to be here 
So they barred the four Kumaras, the first living beings after Lord Brahma, the first sons. They were just like small boys due to their austerities. They were Brahma bodies. That means their understanding of the Supreme Lord is up to Brahman. But they're very inquisitive in such a way that they want to see Vaikuntha and Jaya and Bija, I thought that they're just young boys five-year-old boys so what do what is their qualification they're naked but they're millions and millions and millions of years old so the four Kumaras concluded that actually you're not supposed to be here. How come you are not letting us go through? If there is anyone who's not supposed to be here, it's supposed to be you. You should have compassion, kindness, humility, but you're so arrogant. You're so uh, prudent. You're so proud. So changes between the four Kumaras and Jai and Bijai happened. In actuality, Lord Narayan actually knew what's going on. And so Lord Narayan came out and asked what's going on. It says there that the responsibility lies on the spiritual master or the master, the Supreme Lord, if somehow the disciples or the servants, they're not behaving properly. Uh, it will be the responsibility of the master to take. It's like in America, if your dog bites somebody, it's not the dog will be blamed. It is you who will be blamed. Why are you having your dog? He um, should be unleashed, you know, should not be... not going here and there so Lord Narayan he says yes they are right the four Kumaras are right so now he gave them choice to take birth as demons three birds or devotees seven birds and they chose to become demons so that they can come back immediately to their post. See, the Supreme Lord, He performs many pastimes. And in one pastime, He can accommodate many, many things all at the same time. He wanted to fight. He wanted to teach lessons to the devotees. He wanted to have Prahlad Maharaj become glorified. He wanted to teach the demons many, many things. So in this way, the first lives of Jai and Bijai were Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha is the elder brother. He's the first one to be conceived by DT. Hmm? That uh, this is like way, way in the beginning of the universe. And he, he was so atrocious, Hiranyaksha. He would go all over the universe. He will conquer everyone. And he even put planet Earth into the 
nether region, way down to the bottom of the universe. Our universe is covered halfway by water. That's why there's uh, Garbodak Ocean. Hmm? Garbodak Ocean. Garbodak Ashai Vishnu. Garbodak Ashai Vishnu is the one who lies half of the water of our universe. We don't see this, but this is very, very subtle. And therefore, the Supreme Lord Himself, He appeared as Boar Incarnation. Very beautiful. Not like the ones in modern day Vrindavan, kind of boar or pigs going around. And he appeared like this because the kind of duty or thing that he has to perform, uh, no one else can do it except if you have a body of a boar. Usually, you've seen the boar or the pigs in Vrindavan. Hmm? They play with dirt. Hmm? They go play with the dirt, eat, eat the dirt all the time, dirty. So no, no one else can do this except this beautiful form of the Supreme Lord. Varaha, Varaha Incarnation. So there was a big fight. It is mentioned also in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this part of the fight between Hiranyaksha and Varaha, Varaha Dev. So much so that they were fighting for many, many years. Um, and eventually, Hiranyaksha got killed. Hiranyaksha got killed. And the planet Earth was put back into its own orbit. So Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyakashipu is the king of demons. All the relatives, family members of Hiranyakashipu were all aggrieved by the death of Hiranyaksha. They were all crying, crying and crying and crying. They were all in grief. And Hiranyakashipu, he knows the Vedas. He knows the science of the soul. He knows that the soul cannot be cut into pieces. It's like in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? It was so affected by the grief of the family members that he told them a story from the Vedas, from the Puranas. About the nature of the soul, he told the story of this Kulinga bird. There were two birds, husband and wife, and there are also some children. The wife got killed, and then he wanted to save for for the other bird. It's like it's like useless. What is the use of being alive? And then he got caught also and shot by the hunter. So who's going to take care of the children? And eventually the children also get caught by the hunter. So he was telling them, his relatives, about there's no need to be miserable for the soul is eternal. But within his heart, Hiranyakashipu, was so angry 
of Vishnu. He wanted to become immortal. So he performed tapasya for a hundred celestial years. A hundred celestial years is quite long. Hmm? Ultimately, he wanted to become, he wanted to live as long as Lord Brahma's lifespan. Sahasra Yuga Pariyantam. Huh? Lord Brahma lives for 311 trillion years. He has 100 years. We also have 100 years. The animals also. In comparison, this is relative. It's like there is some uh, microorganisms. They live at night. Then by daytime, they also they will die. So their 100 years is over in that moment. Um, trees supposed to live for their 100 years. They may live for many, many years, but that is their 100 years. This is the time scale of everyone's lifespan in the material world. 100 years. The utmost. So, Hiranyakashipu. He was determined to live as long as Lord Brahma and to become very powerful that he'll become invisible and he'll be able to kill Lord Vishnu. But that he didn't know, that Lord Vishnu is eternal. Hmm? He does not accept. This is the difference between a demon and a devotee. Both know that there is God, but the difference is that the devotees, they become subservient. They understand their position as being servants of the Supreme Lord, and their main duty is to serve Lord Krishna. And the demons, they know there is Narayan, there is Vishnu, but they don't accept his supremacy. They want to become Vishnu. They want to become Narayan. Or greater than Vishnu. Or greater than Narayan. That's why they are demons. So, he was performing this tapasya. He was standing on his toes. And his arms were raised upwards. And... The ants started to eat his body, his flesh. Only skeleton left. There is like fire coming out from his head. And this fire is so hot, scorching hot, that everyone in the universe became disturbed. The animals, the beasts, men, demigods, every living being, they became disturbed. And usually when there is a disturbance in the universe, the demigods, they will go and approach Lord Brahma. Because Lord Brahma, they will go to this Garbodak ocean or this ocean of uh, milk also. There's an ocean of milk. And Lord Brahma will be able to communicate with Lord Vishnu. Very subtle. He's the only one who will be able to talk and he's the only one who will be able to hear the reply. So Lord Vishnu says, yes, I know what's going on. Don't worry. You will all be protected. And his end will come when he offend my devotee, Prahlad. So Lord Brahma, he went back to the demigods and he mentioned that this, yes, you don't worry, everything will be all right. 
let me go and see him. So he went there with Brigu and Daksha. But at first he cannot find where is Hiranyakashipu. His body was covered with like an anthill, covered with sand, covered with bamboos, covered with trees. Cannot figure out where it is. But there, there's some fire coming out there, so he figured out this must be the body. So with his kamandalu, he poured some water, and lo and behold, the form of Hiranyakashipu came about very strong, looking very strong, very effulgent, full of luster and when he saw Lord Brahma in front of him immediately he felt like a stick Dandabhats that's the meaning of Dandabhats Dandabhats means falling like a stick unlike some of our devotees here sometimes they offer obeisances to uh, sannyasi Dandabhats Maharaj but they're standing. Hmm? Dandabhas means all the limbs of the body. And he prays, glorified Lord Brahma, saying that you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ultimately, he, because he flattered him to get some favor. As Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur says, uh, uh, be careful of those who flatter you. Those who criticize you, they are your friends. But those who flatter you, they are your enemies. Hmm. So ultimately, Hiranyakashipu asked Lord Brahma that I want to become immortal. He didn't say this directly that I want to live as long because he knows that Lord Brahma lived for a long, long time. Almost eternal, but no. He's still like a mortal person. Still has to die. Like each and every one of us has uh, a certain amount of breathing in and out of air. If our time is up to there, we cannot prolong it anymore. Mm. Prabhupada gave an example just like in uh, South India and he witnessed this there was an old man a very rich person and uh, he asked the doctors to live four more years because his business is not over yet mm. he still has to marry his daughter his bank account is not enough yet so that you know his family will be able to survive for many generations to come no you cannot you cannot extend your life if it's only up to that moment you cannot even one go one breed of air beyond it so but brahma says uh, i cannot do that Mm. to appease Hiranyakashipu uh, just ask whatever you may say but I cannot do that I am also a mortal person I am not immortal okay let me not be killed by any man or beast because he knew that Lord Vishnu may expand himself again to another form of animal in order to kill him. Nor demigods, nor any weapons, because in those times Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, or Hiranyaksha and Baraha, they were fighting with clubs. So no, no form of weapon. Neither day nor night neither by land sea or in the air 
Hmm? Neither inside nor outside. So so many, so many uh, reasons for him not to die. And every time he asks for this, Lord Brahma says, Tatashtu, Tatashtu, so be it, so be it. Hmm? Hiranyakashipu thought that he'll be able to cheat death. Hmm. We cannot cheat death. Hmm. Kala, Kalosmi, Kalosmi Sambaba. I am time, the destroyer of everything, Lord Krishna says. Mm, it's like Prabhupada gave an example. There is one person in Calcutta. He wanted to cheat death. So he put stool all over his body. At the time of death, he, he, he planned that he will put stool all over his body so that the Yamadutas will not come and get him. They'll, who will want to touch stool of somebody? Huh? You want to do that? Of course not. <laughs> so he didn't know that it is the subtle body that is being taken away by the Yamadutas. So Hiranyakashipu, he thought that he became immortal. Now I am immortal. And he became so furious, ferocious. He became so violent. He wanted to show everywhere in the universe that he is invisible that he even took over the post or the throne of the king of the demigods king indra hmm. yes everyone was so afraid everyone is so afraid of him so all the demigods they were running here and there all over the court different corners they don't want to face Hiranyakashipu. Everyone, all the demigods, they became servants of Hiranyakashipu. Except Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, and Lord Brahma. Everyone saying, yes, Master, whatever you wish to do, we will do it. Your wish is our command. Yes, Master. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm? So now, Prahlad Maharaj is one of the four sons of Hiranyakashipu and he is the pet son, is the favorite son of Hiranyakashipu. And he wanted, Hira, uh, Hiranyakashipu, he wanted Prahlad Maharaj to, to be like him to be his successor. He wanted to be the best of demons like him. And so he started to have a guru call. And the guru call, this is the school of the spiritual master. And the spiritual master is Sukracharya. He is the spiritual master of the demons. It's like in our Srimad Bhagavatam, regular Srimad Bhagavatam, we're talking about Sukracharya and uh, Bali Maharaj and Bhamana, eight canto. So he, he has two sons, Sanda and Amarka. They are the teachers in the school. And Hiranyakashipu put his son into this school, the Guru Kul. And all the sons of the demons also are attending into this Guru Kul. Hiranyakashipu would like Prahlad to be taught about diplomacy, politics, how to be really uh, an expert materialistic person and 
So Prahlad Maharaj, see Prahlad Maharaj right from the very beginning, right from his childhood, even from within the womb of his mother, Kayadu, is a pure devotee. When Hiranyakashipu was up in the mountain, Mandara mountain, when he was doing this tapasya, the demigods took advantage of this and they went to defeat the demons and they capture Kayadu. And they knew that she was pregnant. That the son of Hiranyakashipu is within the womb of Kayadu. So they figure out that let's capture Kayadu. Take her with us and when she gives birth to the child, then we will kill the child. Hmm? In those days, uh, they're very careful also. Uh, not like nowadays, there's what you call abortion. Even while the baby is still inside the womb, already alive, they will still do an abortion. Mm, there is, uh, I just read a news in Alabama, I think it's Alabama, in USA, they banned abortion. And many were opposed. No, it is our rights. We can do whatever we like. Mm? Through many ways, they try to find excuse not to become responsible. Mm, because of sense enjoyment, they will use concert, concert, oh no, concert, 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 what's that? Cons, okay, okay. <laughs> it's very different. Uh, contraceptive and many artificial means to avoid child. But in those days, they know they cannot touch. It's a law of karma will be there. But then Naran Muni came. He says, no, hold on. You cannot take her. You do not know who is in the womb of this mother. He's a pure devotee. He's a Mahabhagavat. Topmost Mahajans. One of the twelve Mahajans. One of the twelve Gurus of Dharma. Swayambu, Narada Sambu, Komara, Kapilo Manu, Pralado, Janako, Bhishmo, Balir, Bayasaki, Vayam. He's a twelve. Oh, he didn't say he's one of the twelve, but he knew that he is one of the gurus. He's one of the authorities in uh, Dharma. No, no. You go, I'll take care of her. So Narad Muni took Kayadu to his ashram. And for one year, I don't know, is it one year? Sometime, for some time, Narad Muni, he taught Prahlad's mother, Kayadu, about the science of self-realization. And from within the womb, Prahlad Maharaj can hear all of this. This is very subtle. Sound vibration is very, very potent. Very potent. They did some experiment in South India as well. There is a school there, like a gurukul, and they're teaching the students English. So some of the students, while they were sleeping, they will have English being taught. And the result was those Students who were hearing English while sleeping, they learned faster than the ones who did not hear. That's why it is good also sometimes 
Um, while sleeping, I have Prabhupada's lecture going on. I can do it. I don't think all of you can do that. Some would like to have like really peaceful sleep, no sound, no nothing, but I can do it. I became used to it. I will have Prabhupada's lectures going on, even though I was sleeping, so this lecture is also going inside. So he learned a lot from the womb of his mother, Prahlad Maharaj. Right from the early age, he will be crying if he's not hearing about Krishna. He's an exemplary person. I'm just going to read to you about Prahlad Maharaj's qualities. He was completely cultured as a qualified Brahmana, having very good character, and being determined to understand the absolute truth. He had full control of his senses and mind. Like the super soul, he was kind to every living entity and was the best friend of everyone. To respectable persons, he acted exactly like a menial servant. To the poor, he was like a father. To his equals, he was attached like a sympathetic brother, and he considered his teachers, spiritual masters, and elder God brothers to be as good as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He was completely free from unnatural pride that might have arisen from his good education riches, beauty, aristocracy, and so on. Hmm. Although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he himself was not an Asura, but a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Unlike other Asuras, he was never envious of Vaishnavas. He was not agitated when put into danger. And he was neither directly nor indirectly interested in fruitive activities described in the Vedas. Indeed, he was completely devoid of material desires. He always controlled his senses and life air, and being of steady intelligence and determination, he subdued all lusty desires. So, yes, Hiranyakashipu thought that his son was like an Asura like himself. See, Prahlad Maharaj played uh, dumb like Maharaj Rahugana in the fifth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was in the topmost level also of devotional service. First Maharaj Bharat, then a deer, then Maharaj Rahugana. No, Jada Bharat. Jada Bharat. Maharaj Rahugana is the king. Yes, that pastime. Jada Bharat. He played deaf and dumb in front of Maharaj Rahugana. But then when he heard the teachings, he was dumbstruck. He understood that Jada Bharat is not an ordinary person. So Prahlad Maharaj, he went to the school, but he was not so interested in the teachings. He was just like there for the sake of being there. His mind is always absorbed in remembering Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. That one day when he came to, came home, and this is the usual um, pattern if you have children going to school uh, by the end of the day you will ask your child so my dear son my dear daughter what have you learned in school today Hiranyakashipu did that also so he must be the original person who asked like this he is the original terrorist 
and he is like trying to become a good father to his son. So he asked his son, uh, my dear father, oh yeah, my dear son, uh, what have you learned today? Oh, he says, oh, my dear father, he says, uh, what, uh, he didn't really learn this in school. He just say, now that you're old, you should go to the forest, retire. Particularly, you go to Brindavan. <laughs> Van. Prabhupada put in the purport, Van. Forest, that means Brindavan. The forest of Brinda Devi, Tulsi Devi. Now that you're old, you should, you should go and retire and think about the Supreme Lord. And um, he would became surprised. What is this? How? Where did you learn this from? The school must be infiltrated by Vaishnavas. So he called Sanda in America. What is this? What is it? What, what is it? This is what he learned. And Sanda Marcus says, no, 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 no. I, we didn't teach this. There must be some uh, spies from the Vaisnavas entering. And then, you know, when they have a free time, they're, they're trying to teach this kind of uh, knowledge. Okay, be very diligent. I don't want to hear this anymore. Okay, you take, you take him. But then, during recess time, Prahlad Maharaj, during tiffin time, hmm? uh, Prahlad Maharaj will gather his uh, classmates, fellow Asura students, demons, sons of the demons. And they ask, he asks, now is the time to understand Komara Acharet Pragyo. Now is the time to learn about the absolute truth. And the children says, come on, Prahlad, we're still young. We have plenty of time. When we get old, when we get old, we'll become serious. Uh, this is the mentality of materialistic person. Thinking that I'll become serious when, you know, the time is there almost to live one's body. Uh, but there is a saying in English, Practice makes one perfect. Whatever you're doing right now will be tested at the time of death. Death is the final examination. Everything that we're doing right now will constitute a consciousness whereby it will be developed at the time of death. Whatever we're thinking at the time of death, that we will remember that we will take whatever we remember at the time of that we will take up that form of body next life so we cannot force krishna krishna let me think of you at the time of that now krishna is not our servant krishna you must be be there let me remember you it's not possible if you're lucky, it may, but it's, the chance is almost zero. Now, unless one performs some kind of bhakti, and we've heard of this, we've seen many devotees leaving their bodies in Vrindavan. Um, they did bhakti and somehow they became ensnared by maya, somehow or another, and sometime, of their life but somehow Krishna pulled them back here and they left their body in the association of devotees hearing the holy names of the Lord Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made that arrangement especially those Sankirtan devotees who sacrificed their lives in the Sankirtan mission so Prahlad Maharaj was teaching them, no, you should chant the holy name of the Lord. Like I remember there's this uh, Krishna radio, Radio Krishna. There is, you know, many stories of this and uh, one of my favorites there is the story of Prahlad. Hmm? There is a melody, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. No, <laughs> there is a melody. You remember that? Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Many children, right? Have you heard of this radio, Krishna? No, in the early days we used to have these tape, cassette tapes. And from America, there's so many stories about Lord Krishna, and this is one of my favorites as well. So, again, to test whether his son was changed, Hiranyakashipu, one day he asked, My dear child, what have you learned today? And this time, he says, Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, <laughs> Archanam, Mandanam, Sakyan, Dasyam, Atmanivedanam. Hearing, chanting, remembering. He says, well, what? This is nonsense. Lord Vishnu. Now he concluded that you will be the cause of my death. Because you are on the side of Lord Vishnu. Now, the real phase of Hiranyakashipu came, not just as a father, but an enemy of Lord Vishnu and the Vaisnavas. Mm. He asked his men to torture him. He threw him. Prahlad Maharaj was being thrown from mountain, no scratch. No bruise, no nothing. He was given a poison cake. Looks like, okay, my, you know, nice, looking nice. But there's cake inside. Uh, there is poison inside. He did not die. He was pierced by tridents, by swords, trying to cut him. No cut, nothing. He was put in a boiling oil. Not, didn't get burned. He was put in a pit of snake, in a deep well, scorpions, serpents. No, no bite. Hiranyakashipu was surprised. What is this? No one can harm this person, this child of mine. So he asked, where did you get your strength from? He asked Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj says, My dear father. Oh no, he says, My dear king of the demons. He didn't say, My dear father. My dear Asura. Raja Asura, king of the demons. It's the same, from the same source where you get your power from. Because he was very powerful. Just by... Uh, a movement, a little movement of his eyebrows, everyone will be running hither and thither. They're so scared, so fearful of Hiranyakashipu. But Prahlad is not afraid of his father. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting the same strength. So Hiranyakashipu says, uh, where is he? Well, he's everywhere. He's in and out. He's here, he's everywhere. And then he's ready to kill him now. He took up his sword. And before doing that, he asked, Is he here in this pillar? He says, Yes, he's there as well. And then he smashed. And then there was this very strenuous screeching sound came out from the pillar. Never heard before anywhere in the three worlds even Hiranyakashipu was surprised at first he did not see who you know, who is the source of this sound and then when he came out this sharp teeth growling lion half man half lion um, came 
Well, I've heard there is a story that uh, he, uh, Nishing Hadev, half man, half lion, he came, he came out uh, not at dusk. He killed Hiranyakashipu at dusk, at sunset, because there was fighting for a few hours. So Nishingadev appeared like sometime in the afternoon because he cannot appear and then there is no fighting. Immediately appeared and then killed. No, there, there was some fighting like a mouse and a cat. You know, Nishingadev is like a cat. So you ever seen a, a cat with a mouse trying to capture? Sometimes the cat will let the mouse go away. And then after some time, the cat will run and then catch again. And then playing with the mouse. So release again. And then the mouse will run again. So Hiranyakashipu was thinking, ha 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 ha. This is very easy. I can defeat this. I can defeat this uh, Vishnu. Huh? Because he can get away. But he didn't know that uh, Lord Nisingadev is just playing around with him. So after some time, when the right time came, because the boon has to be fulfilled. Whatever boon that he asked from Lord Brahma has to be fulfilled. It was sunset, dusk. It is like, you know, twilight. There is, it's not daytime and it's not nighttime. So Hiranyakashipu was captured by Nishinghadev. And it is like in the doorway. The doorway is not outside and it's not inside. He put Hiranyakashipu on the lap of Nishinghadev. He opened his chest. And he took the heart, threw it away. He took the intestines and put it like a garland. Drops of blood all over the body and the face of Nishinghadev. And everyone was so fearful. He was like, well, he is like so fearful. No one, no one dared to come so close to Lord Nisinghadev. He was, I mean, his, his anger is because his devotee is being harmed. Anger can be used in Krishna consciousness as well, just like Hanumanji. Hmm. There are these six enemies of a conditioned soul, lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, and envy. Lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, and envy. All of those can be dovetailed in Krishna consciousness except envy. Anger can be used in Krishna's service as well. If you've seen some devotees being offended, you, become, you can become angry and defend them. For the devotee, he does not defend himself. Like Prahlad Maharaj, he did not defend himself. He was just dependent on Lord Krishna, Lord Vishnu. He knew that Lord Vishnu will protect him. So the Lord became obliged to his devotees. Lord Nisinghadev was so angry, he cannot, no one can pacify him, even Lakshmi Devi, Brahmaji, Lord Shiva, no one dared to come and approach. Then eventually Lord Brahma told Prahlad Maharaj, you please go. He came for you. You're the only one who can pacify him. So, Prahlad Maharaj being Innocent, like a child. He's a child. He says, okay, I go. And then, when Lord Nisinghadev saw that Palad Maharaj in front of him, 
then his anger subsides, subsided, started to calm down. And he started glorifying Lord Nisinghadev, Prahlad Maharaj. And Lord Nisinghadev asked him, uh, is, do, do you want any benediction, anything I can do for you? She says, no, I don't want anything. Because if I ask for something, then our relationship is just like a merchant and a person who's doing business. I'm not here for business. I don't want anything in return. And then Nishinghadev, please, ask something. So Prahlad Maharaj says, well, if you really, if you want, I want everyone in the universe be liberated. He said, okay, including my father. This is the heart of a Vaishnava. He does not have any enemy. Anything that happens to him, even if it's like reverse from what he is expecting it to be, not admirable from what he wanted to be, he sees this as Krishna's mercy. So Prahlad Maharaj, he understood that I may be being tortured like this, whatever my father did to me, I may be the cause. And like a materialist, if something happens to them, he blames everyone. If something happens good to him, he glorify himself. But if something negative happens, yes, yes, all of you, I hate all of you, you're the cause. But no. For a devotee, he understood that everything happens to him, either good or bad, favorable or unfavorable, is because from the mercy of Lord Krishna, and the root cause is because of me. So Prahlad Maharaj's heart uh, is full of compassion, very humble, humility is there, kindness is there, that even his father, who really gave him a hard time, big trouble. You cannot imagine. Just imagine the father doing this to a child. Um, so a question was asked, uh, how, Yudhisthira Maharaj asked, Narad Muni, how can a father do that to his own son? And Narad Muni says, this is to glorify Prahlad Maharaj. To show that his devotee will never perish. Konteya pratijanehi name bhakta prayachita. Right? A devotee never perish. Declare it boldly. Mm. He told Arjuna because sometimes Krishna, uh, he never fulfills his, what he says. So he will ask, he asks, Arjuna, that you declare it boldly that my devotee never perish. Because a devotee is only, only has one word and never change. So, yes, after the demise of Hiranyakashipu, Nishinghade before living Prahlad, he enthroned him to be the next emperor of the world and uh, he ruled for many many thousands and thousands of years the whole universe as a Raja Risi. There's so many uh, chapters in this part of the Srimad Bhagavatam and we are fasting today. So I wish everyone will absorb themselves in such a way that they should read this part of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Practically the whole seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? Try to emulate whatever you can learn from the teachings of Prahlad Maharaj, we don't have enough time 
for that. And now, uh, 477 years ago, it was 1542, 21st of May, to be exact, Radharaman appeared. Radharaman is that most beautiful form of the Supreme Lord being worshipped for the last 577 years. Oh, sorry. Is it? Yes. Um, in the same place in Vrindavan. Radharaman. That is where one day it was Nisingha Chaturdasi, the night before. And prior to that also, there is one rich mercantile wealthy person, a seti or a set. He gave Gopal Bhat Goswami set of many fine expensive clothes or clothings silk very expensive some ornaments and uh, at that time the other Goswamis they're worshiping Lord Krishna in his tribanga form three bending form like a human with two arms two legs and flute playing but then Gopal Bhatt Goswami at that time he was worshiping Shalagram Shilas 12 of them the story goes that when Gopal Bhatt was still young it was in South India Sri Rangam I remember going there, Sri Rangam, hmm? South India with a group of brahmacharis uh, one year, many years ago, because there was an installation of deities and a temple, one of our devotees in Kerala. <coughs> so we went to this place, uh, this is like Vaikuntha, there are seven gates leading to the main darshan of Sri Rangam. Uh, so Bhyankata Bhatt is the father of Gopal Bhatt. He was like around five years old as well at that time. Bhyankata Bhatt, Tirumala, and Prabodhananda Sarasvati, three brothers. They belong to Ramanuja Sampradaya. Hmm? And uh, Sri, Sri, Sri Sampradaya, followers of Lakshmi Narayan. So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, during that time, he was traveling all over India, especially, specifically South India, to spread love of God. Teach everyone the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Everyone who met Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will also be sworn and they will swim in the ecstasy of love of God just by seeing Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic features his effulgence his dancing his chanting everyone will be attracted to this chanting of the holy names of the lord and one day he reached sri rangam ranga kshetra and venkatabad he invited lord chaitanya mahaprabhu to stay at his place because uh, it is Chaturmasha. Chaturmasha means 
four months rainy season and the proper way to observe Chaturmasya, especially the sadhus, they will stay in one place and they perform their bhajans there. They perform their worship of the Supreme Lord. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, usually he will be invited by many brahmanas. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will not be so easily accept this invitation, not unless you are a lakpati, not lakh rupees. Lakpati means you chant 100 times the holy name of the Lord. So he knew that this Bhankatabad, Tirumala, and Prabodhananda Sarasvati, they're all Sri Vaish, they're Vaishnavas, they're four Sampradayas. So he said, Yes, I will really want to, to accept your invitation. So at that time, as soon as Gopal Bhatt, he had darshan of the Supreme Lord, his heart immediately became captivated by the beauty the transcendental form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that even though he was just small he asked permission from Lord Chaitanya if he could be served and yes he did a lot of menial servant service for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he would clean after he ate prasad he honored prasad he will wash his clothes and everything and usually he will give his remnants to Gopal Bhatt. And then now time is over, Chaturmasya is over. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was about to live and the family of Bhyankata Bhatt, especially Gopal Bhatt, he understood that Gauranga Mahaprabhu is about to live so they cannot take the intensity of separation that they will have because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will depart, will go and even days before they were crying and crying and crying and they begged Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to please don't go we cannot, we cannot bear the separation we will die so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu agreed, okay, I will stay for a couple more days. No one can stop the Supreme Lord. He can come and he can go at his own free will. But then, Gopal Bhatt would like to travel with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, no, you stay at home, take care of your parents, and when the right time comes, when they get old and service is done, you can go to Vrindavan. You can go to Vrindavan. So he followed the order of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and at the age of 35, he left Vrindavan. Oh, he left Sri Rangam. He went, he left for Vrindavan. He went to Vrindavan. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he foretold already to Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami that there is this devotee, a follower of mine, who will come to Vrindavan and you please take care of him. So he went, Gopal Bhatt, he went to Vrindavan and he met Rupa Goswami and Rupa Goswami treat Gopal Bhatt Goswami as like his younger brother. Then they told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about this and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so happy. Gopal Bhatt did not meet anymore Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he was somewhere else. But then one day in a dream Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the dream of Gopal Bhatt saying that uh, if you wish to worship me you go to Nepal specifically Kali Gandaki river 
where the Salagram Silas are. Hmm? So he went, he went there and uh, he was taking bath. So when he put his kamandalu, uh, some Silas jumped inside the kamandalu. He said, what is this? I did not put this inside, so he put them back again. So he, he, he put water, and then the Shalagam Shilas went inside again. They jumped inside. I'm not worthy of having the Shalagam Shilas. So he put them back again. Then he put his Kamandalu again to get some water, and then Twelve Silas jumped inside his Kamandalu. Hmm? And uh, so what can I do now? Perhaps Salagram Sila needs my service. So I will bring them to Brindavan. So that was the start of the worship of Salagram Sila. He would, because in, tho in those days, uh, the Goswamis, they don't have permanent place to reside. So he would tie, he would put the Salagram Shila at the end of his cloth. He would tie them in the corner and he would put the cloth uh, around his neck. So he was... Nisinga Chatur Dasi, and he was praying to Lord Nisinga Dev, My dear Lord, I know you can do whatever you wish to do for your devotee. And I wish I can worship the Supreme Lord like a human form, hmm? like fine hair, with, you know, like, like a Supreme Lord himself with his form three bending, three banga, and playing his flute. So that was the night before, that was Nisinga Chaturdasi night. So he put all the shilas back to where they were, like he put him in a basket, it says in a wicked basket. And then the next day he woke up, he went to Yamuna, he took bath. And then when he came back, he saw that the basket was open and he saw this beautiful form of Radharaman. Radharaman means the lover of Radha. Radharaman, lover of Radha. And the other 11 Silas were there. So the Damodar, Damodar Sila became manifest like 12 inches in height so adorable so beautiful you can see his teeth you can see his fingernails uh, so smooth so immediately he went to see Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami and told him about this revelation the self-manifest deity of Radharaman everybody came from all over Vrindavan they've heard the news uh, so that was today um, and somehow or other his wish became fulfilled. Some scientists a few years ago they wanted to check whether this is curved by some instrument. So they tested, they, they went to see and no kind of material or instrument can curve such smooth surface like the one that Radharaman has and at the back of the deity Radharaman they they found that there is this chakra and usually the Shalagram Silas has chakra this is the sign huh? they cannot find any way that this is done through machine or anything so one time 
Gopal Bhatt Goswami, he went to Haridwar and he stopped by one night in a Brahmana family house and this Brahmana was so also captivated by the beauty of Gopal Bhatt and uh, he promised that one day I will be able to serve you because he's a family man he cannot live his family so after some years around 10 years after there is this one young boy he knocked on the door of Gopal Bhatt saying that I am from this village and uh, I belong to this family and I'm here to serve you so Gopal Bhatt remember that yes he must be a son son of that Brahmana who promised that one day he will help me so I'm here to assist you to do some menial service to you and you please accept so from that day on that young boy he helped um, he helped brother uh, Gopal Bhatt and also that boy became the first uh, after Gopal Bhatt left his body he became the Pujari for Radharaman This is the only deity in Vrindavan of the Goswamis that didn't leave Vrindavan. Because in those days, the Mughals, they're very atrocious. They will break the deities. They will consecrate it all the, t the temples. It's like Radha Govinda Mandir it used to be like seven floors high. Uh, Radha Madan Mohan, they will break. But when the Mughals came, they thought uh, that Radharaman temple is like a Grihasta ashram. No one can configure, no one can figure out that that is a mandir. Because when you go, it's like all Grihasta ashrams and then you, you go inside. So he's the only one who did not leave Brindavan and Brinda Devi in Kamyaban. Kamiyavan, yes. So right now, uh, worship is still going on. There was this one lamp, Akanda Jyoti. One lamp that has been lit up for the last 577 years. They don't use matches when they cook for Radharaman. They just use whatever the fire has been lit up the year before and they will use for cooking same now you don't see Radharani besides Raman Ramana Radharaman because there is no Radharani the only symbol that you can see that Radharani is there is that there is a crown a crown Usually Radharani's crown is going towards Krishna. If you look right now, if Radharani is wearing crown, the crown is going that way. There is a crown? Yes. Mukut. So there must be something going like this. So if you go Radharaman temple, you will not see Radharani, but that symbol of Radharani's crown is there. That means Radharani is there. We should pray today to Lord Nishinghadev. He is the protector, not just for being harmed. Uh, devotees of the Lord, praise to Lord Nishinghadev for protection so that their Guru Bhakti, their devotion towards their spiritual master, their devotion towards Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, their devotion towards Shishirada Shama Sundar will not be destroyed by becoming attracted to material energy. Protection means shield. We should pray to Lord Nishing Hadeb to protect us that our bhakti will always increase 
again and again and more and more we should ask the Supreme Lord for his protection so that ultimately we will attain love of God nowadays it becomes a uh, fad a fashion devotees they wear big big nishing hakavacha you've seen that not just small now it becomes like Wah. the bigger the better hmm? pure devotees of the Lord they don't need nishing hakavacha in the early days during Prabhupada's time no one was wearing any Nishinga Kabacha. Isn't that right, Prabhu? No. They all depend on Lord Krishna. They all depend on the pure devotee of the Supreme Lord. But you go to Loi Bazaar, you can ask them the biggest Nishinga Kabacha and they will offer it to you. They give it to you. Uh, in those days, they don't. The pure devotees, they don't. They're like Prahlad Maharaj, he, he only depends on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we also depend, we need protection not to be harmed. If you're going to be harmed, you'll be harmed. Rake Krishna Mareke, Mare Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna does not want you to be harmed, no one can harm you. If Krishna wants to kill you, no one can protect you. Look, Hiranyakashipu. Who can protect him? Ravana, Shishupal, Dantabakra. Hmm? This is the kind of prayers that we ask. Protection from our Guru Bhakti. Our devotion to our spiritual master. Our devotion towards Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, Radhe Sham. That no one can really protect us except Krishna so today's most auspicious day is very um, auspicious in such a way to remember the Supreme Lord in his form Nishingha Dev, Radharaman also some devotees Vaisnava Acharyas today also is their appearance day so as much as possible if you fast mm. see Prahlad Maharaj is a pure devotee of the Supreme Lord he is an eternal associate of the Supreme Lord Prahlad Maharaj is always there mm. like Arjuna is always there but there is one story in the Puranas how Prahlad Maharaj became a Prahlad Maharaj There was this two boyfriend and girlfriend. They love each other so much. No one can separate them. But one day, there was some misunderstanding. One day, there was a fight. And they concluded that they will take part away. I don't like you anymore, the boy says. I think his name is Basudev. And the girl says, I don't like you anymore also. I want to forget you for the rest of my life. We're finished. We're gone. Our relationship ends right here, right now. So both were broken hearted brokenhearted they were crying because you know that's it their love is finished so it was night time the boy was wandering here and there he doesn't know what to do in the middle of the forest he ended up and there was a shrine inside the forest he entered he did not eat the whole day. He cannot eat. If you're in love and you become, I don't know, some of you, 
You don't want to eat. You don't want to meet anybody. You don't want to see anyone. You, you don't want to do anything. You just want to forget the whole thing because, you know, you're broken hearted. So he went into the shrine. He was like crying and crying the whole day, the whole night. And the girlfriend also, somehow, she ended up in the same place. But they didn't know that one of them or the other one is there. So they were crying and crying and fasting also, did not eat the whole day. So the next morning, when the sun rises, they saw each other. And somehow they reconciled with each other and saying that, oh, I'm sorry. The other one says, I'm sorry also. I will not let this happen again. Let's get together again. And they agreed that they will not be separated anymore. So that was the cause and they didn't know that that, temp that place is the temple of Lord Nishinghadev. They didn't know. So they were fasting, they were crying, and they were praying also to the Lord that, you know, whatever happened, happened. But somehow, because of their tapasya, next life, that boy became Prahlad Maharaj. That's how the story went. So thank you very much for your kind attention. We're still fasting, okay? Don't forget. We're fasting till... So if you also fast and don't drink any water, maybe you, uh, you'll become a great devotee of Prahlad Maharaj. You cannot become Prahlad Maharaj anymore. Sorry. His, his, his position is already taken. But uh, you can be uh, a pure devotee of Lord Nishinghadev, if you can. Those who are sick, those children, those who have to take medicine, they cannot do fasting. You have to do it. But for those of you who are able, try to do it. We fast for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. We don't fast because we want to attain material opulence. We fast for the Lord's pleasure. Okay, we stop here. We have a question? Here. here is it turn it on? Yes. Hare Krishna. Wonderful uh, class. So all living entities in the universe were liberated. All? Is that just that match? No. I, did you get his question? Were all the living entities got liberated only on that batch? Um, this question was asked that <clears throat> eventually, eventually all of the living beings in the material world will get liberated. Ultimately all of us are devotees of the Supreme Lord, even the demons. But there will be not a time that the universe will become vacant. There is always an influx of, de of, of devotees who wanted to be separate from Krishna, to be happy from Krishna. I was saying this in the class the other day in Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says that actually you are in Vaikuntha. You are just like in a dreaming state. As soon as you forget Krishna, that's it. No Vaikuntha. But as soon as you remember Krishna, that is Vaikuntha. That's why Prabhupada says, within a moment, you'll be Krishna conscious. How long does it take to become Krishna conscious? Within a moment. So right now, we're just like starting to wake up full 
Wakefulness means Krishna consciousness. Right now we have knowledge Krishna is God. I have to do service. Hmm? No offend any Vaisnavas. But at the same time, we are also wanted to fulfill our minute independence to still enjoy the material energy. So that's why we are conditioned. Up and down, up and down, up and down. But as soon as you really understood that yes, Krishna is God and I am his servant and I meant to serve him. Never to forget Krishna, always remember Krishna, immediately you are liberated. You are in Vaikuntha. Even you are in the material world. For the pure devotee, it's like Prahlad Maharaj, he sees himself as not a devotee, he sees everyone as a devotee. Even his father, who is a demon, he considered him as a devotee. So ultimately, we are in a different batch than those. But never, just like Prabhupada gave an example, have you seen the prison house empty? No. They come and go, they come and go. Right? So, yes, we are in a dreaming state right now. And as soon as we wake up, that means as soon as you always remember Krishna, you are in Vaikuntha. Wake, wakefulness means your eyes is open. No. Wakefulness means you are Krishna conscious. Hmm? The owls also have wide eyes, wider eyes than us. But they're covered up by the most of material nature. So yes, who is that? <clears throat> Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur is an incarnation of Lord Brahma and Prahlad Maharaj. Because he wanted everyone to be liberated by chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Combined incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj and Lord Brahma. So when are we going to wake up? When we become Krishna conscious, you are awake. Right now, we're awake. But am I Krishna conscious? Maybe up to some time. Then during the day, I will forget Him. So the main thing here is to always be absorbed in Krishna's service. In a favorable way. Think of Krishna in a favorable way. No desire for karma kanda and jnana kanda. Was that the father or the sister of Kamsa? He's thinking of Krishna also, 24 hours. But when he looked and he's in the mirror, he doesn't have, he cannot see his head. That means he's enmity. That means he's an enemy of Lord Krishna. Think of Krishna all the time and then you are in Vaikuntha, even in this body. Okay? Yes, sir. Priya. Thanks. Maharaj, you were giving the example of Narasimha Dev. He has been two hours before to kill that Hinagashpur according to his wounds. So, we are fasting in the dust. So that means when uh, Inandashkus was liberated, then he will take Pasad. Yeah, that is the victory. Yeah. Victory, take Pasad. So the fasting is for the victory. Yeah, yes, the yes. Victory. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they were fighting for a few hours and that cannot be at dusk. If you fight, if Lord Nisingadev appeared at dusk, but they're fighting still, no. Because after fighting, it'll be night time already. That means that boon will not be fulfilled. Does it make sense, Maharaj? It makes sense, isn't it? The boon is neither night, neither day. 
So right there. And they were fighting before. Okay? So many, many in the GBC resolutions, many things that we have to do regarding these festivals. There will be no more Lalita Sashti. You know, Lalita, appearance day of Lalita. Usually we do that, what, two days before? Two days before Radhastami? Isn't that correct, Maharaj? Because according to uh, Radha Krishna Ganodesh Deepika, uh, she is 27 days older. So how is that two days before becomes, uh, you know, 27 days? Maybe it's in a different kalpa. Now, no more Radakund, Radakund appearance day also. We used to have uh, Bahulastami in Kartik. That is not the appearance day of, of Radakund. That was the day when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discovered Radakund. Bahulastami. Radakund appearance day now is in the month of Chaitra. Chaitra. Chaitra Mas. Yeah, that is the difference now. Because they figured out why are we celebrating Radakun's appearance day and Bahulastami, and that is not. So it'll be in a different now. But the Brajabasis, they, they celebrate it in that way. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. I understand. No, uh, that story indicated that how Prahlad became Prahlad Maharaj. But Lord Nisingadev existed eternally. He existed. He exists eternally. If you go to South India, there are nine forms of Prahlad Maharaj. Different forms. What we worship is only one form. So in different kalpa, the Lord comes in different mood. In different ways. Okay? Here we see that uh, uh, Vinaka school is asking these poems. So according to the poems, Lord decided that he has this one, so then he appeared as Nasir Mahavata. So uh, again, no, no. Yeah, no, it, that is the very first time, the very first time when, when uh, at the beginning of time of our universe. But how many times the universe is created and manifest and there's dissolution and different. It's like in our Kali Yuga. Our Kali Yuga is very special. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came 500 years ago but he he does not distribute braja prem every kali yuga this kali yuga is so special because lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is giving freely braja prem love of radha and krishna previously different so different kalpa different manifestation of the supreme lord could be the same form but different result you get it's like we're here how come we're still here in this form we've been here before many many times hmm? now you have a different family but in your previous life you have a different family also so this is like that is that okay? Yes, sir. Can you talk about the whole, you know, and glorify the place? I have never been there. I have never been there, and maybe one day I'll be there. There is a place there where it says there is a mountain where Lord Nisinghadev appeared. Huh? And if you go to that mountain, you can still see the traces of 
the blood of Hiranyakashipu. Even the pillar is still there. Yes. Yes. You know, and after that, another kalpa, Lord Nishingadev wash his hands in uh, Nishingapali. Yes. That's right. That's right. Resting place of Lord Nishingadev. So there, this, these are all everywhere. These are all. So if you go there, there is some, there is some Nishingha feature of the Supreme Lord that if you go to that forest. You'll be lucky to come out alive. We have one of our devotees. What's his name? Um, son of Narayan Prabhu. Vishvakarma. No, no, no. No, no, no. The one who wrote the book, a big book, Nishinga Temples. It's a nice one to, 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 uh, to see. To have that Nishinga temple. Maybe one day we all go and <laughs> have darshan of Ahobalam. Some devotees are fortunate enough, they have lots of time, they can go to those places. I'm sorry, I don't know much, but we can Google it for you later and I can tell you <laughs> a little bit. You can go Google, Google map, you can have go like that or type ahobalam okay thank you very much shini singade bhagavan ke pralad maharaj ki vidhai gaur premanande